Hello, this is David Hardman, and in this brief presentation I'm going to give a, an outline of template theories and prototype theories of visual perception. So one of the key questions that is asked by cognitive scientists is how do we make sense of our visual environments? How do we perceive things? And one idea about how we might do this is uh, template theory. And just to give an illustration of what we're talking about when we're talking about templates, let's have a look at their use in everyday life. So when uh, police officers take fingerprints from a crime scene, they do this so that they can try and match them up against stored instances that have been taken from particular individuals. And those stored instances are templates. Likewise uh, with barcoding in shops. When you scan a product and the barcode is read, this is compared against uh, a stored instance which then provides information about uh, pricing uh, and availability and so forth. Um, another example that is becoming more important and uh, increasingly developed is that of face recognition systems. However, these currently are far from perfect for all of the reasons that uh, psychologists are interested in. It illustrates the uh, difficulty that we have in trying to understand how perception actually works. And there are a couple of interesting video clips uh, available on the internet that illustrate uh, the difficulties of face recognition and indeed object recognition generally. Uh, so there's a clip on YouTube called Where's My Robot? and another one on Google video called Visions of the Future. So these are worth taking a look at. But for the moment I just want to illustrate uh, in a very simple way how templates work and the problem uh, that they have as a class of explanation. So supposing that I'm presented with a letter R like the one on the screen here. I can easily recognize this as a letter R. And template theory says that that is because stored in my mind I have a template which exactly matches this example of a letter R. But here's where the problem arises. Supposing I'm now presented with this. Again, I can recognize this as a letter R, even though it's in a somewhat different orientation. Or how about this? Again, I can recognize it as a letter R, and this, this, and so on. Each of these and many, many, many more instances that could be provided, I can recognize easily as a letter R. But are we really saying that somewhere in my mind I've got templates that match each of these possible examples? And of course these examples, uh, there could be sort of a near infinitude of them. So this is the big problem with uh, the template matching theory of perception. Uh, it requires that we have um, a huge number of templates stored in our minds and this just seems very implausible, particularly when we're talking not just about um, uh, two-dimensional letters of the alphabet, but real three-dimensional objects in our everyday environment. Okay, so one way of getting around this is to talk not of templates being stored in mind, but of prototypes. And prototypes are a kind of average. They are an aggregation of the typical features that we might observe across many instances. So prototypes essentially uh, are representative of a class of patterns or objects. And interestingly, prototypes don't necessarily have to match any specific instance. And this was illustrated in a study conducted by Solso and McCarthy in 1981, where participants were presented with a series of line drawings of faces. 
and each of these faces that they were presented with were based on a central prototype but the prototype itself was not actually presented to the participants in the initial phase of the study. Later participants were presented with uh, line drawings again uh, some of which they had seen, some of which were distractors and which included the prototype upon which the original faces had been based. And the participants in this study tended to recognize the prototype as a face that they had seen earlier. So Seltzer and McCarthy called this a pseudo-memory for faces and it uh, illustrates the fact that um, uh, the stored prototype in mind does not necessarily have to match any specific instance. And just to conclude, prototype theories are uh, much better supported than uh, the template theory that we just looked at, but are still not the only uh, account of how we go about perceiving things. And I will look at uh, these in uh, other examples in uh, other presentations.